All right, so we're back here talking about negotiation techniques and dealing with cultural diversity, uh, specifically language barriers, emotional uh, attitudes, values, morals. And I will tell you now, nothing scares me more than this because of the fear of the unknown. Even as an instructor, I, he I hesitate a lot because obviously in class, I have many nationalities that are in class, some that with all kinds of varying degrees of their understanding of the English language, as well as in real estate, you realize that we're using a lot of Latin when dealing with terms like Liz Pendens and, you know, uh, we're dealing with, there's French terms when dealing with life estates, pure author V. So not only are we dealing with English, we're dealing with a lot of other languages. And the fact that cultural diversity is becoming very, very common now, um, this is a very important aspect. And not only does it should scare you from a standpoint of uh, violation of any of the fair housing rules, that's not what really bothers me the most. What bothers me the most is the fear of giving service that is not the best that it could be because of my limitations uh, in certain aspect, okay? And what I mean is I don't speak Spanish, I don't speak Hindi, uh, I don't speak Burmese. So I'm afraid that I'm always going to give bad service because of just language barriers. Uh, I had a situation several years ago with a gentleman that was from Greece. Uh, he had been living in the United States, gotten his uh, citizenship. Uh, but at the closing table, you know, at the very, right before we started closing, you know, he, bam, he slammed his hands on the table. He said, okay, one last round. And we all looked at him and we, uh, the, the young lady on the other side of the table jumped because <clears throat> he smacked so hard. And I'm like, whoa, what are you, what are you doing? He's like, well, in Greece, we have one last round of negotiation right before we close. And I'm like, that is not the norm here. You have already signed a contract, <clears throat> which he went ahead and closed and he was happy with it. But it was just a cultural di difference that they he was used to having one last round of negotiation, whereas we don't do it that way. Uh, that was the day that kind of opened my eyes on the fact that there is differences in the way that people obviously live and more importantly in the way that real estate is done. So you've got to be really cognizant of any cultural differences. So be aware that there is some diversity and the culture diversity is there. You know, the other thing you don't want to do is lump all cultures together in spite of similarities. You know, there may be darker skinned people <clears throat> that may be from Africa and there may be from Southern Africa that have a different culture. You know, people that appear to be Asian may be from one part of China as a part, different part of Singapore. So even people that you would think maybe have the same culture or same tendencies may not. So make sure you understand any of the cultural taboos of any of the clients that you're going to be working with. One of the things I would suggest to help you do that is maybe become involved in some of those community activities so that you get to be more immersed in their cultures and their way of life and things like that. Now, one of the things I will tell you is if you make a mistake, the best thing that you can literally do is just apologize and move forward. Don't dwell on it, but learn from that mistake. If you do something wrong and it offends somebody or they call you out on it, um, the best thing is just to say, you know, I, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I did not <clears throat> understand or I don't know the cultures. One of the best ways that people have often said is just brush up on listening. Try and understand and listen more and talk less. That will also give you some insight into the way they think and the way they're t talking um, and their activities and some of their cultures. <clears throat> One of the things I also want to tell you is you might want to seek outside advice, specifically if you are going to target or market to a specific culture. All right. 
You should not market to a culture specifically if your intent is to not be involved with that culture. And what I guess what I'm saying is you shouldn't do it just for the money aspect. If your whole intent is to be a good agent and professional and give the best service and help these emerging markets as they are called, then I commend you, but you should do a little time and practice and spend some effort on your part to try and make sure that you are learning their culture, all right? So if you're targeting a special demographic, make sure you research some of their cultural facets. And there's some good ways to research it. One of the ways that I found is after I've created a bond with someone, I literally have had conversations and said, hey, look, I got some embarrassing questions or I've got some important questions. Can we actually talk about this? And you will find that most, if not everybody, is very reticent to try and help you if you are coming to them with a sincere request. You know, uh, I have sat down with people from the Muslim religion and asked them questions. And they have been very forthright with me about their religious beliefs and their insights and where it came from and all of their thoughts. Now, I'm not saying that you have to interview that person. And I feel that you probably should already have a good bond with that person before you can move to that level or that step of confidence. So if that's what you're doing uh, or wanting to try and help, then please do it for the right reason and make sure <clears throat> that you do some research. First, here's some things that I've looked up. For instance, uh, eye contact. Eye contact in the United States is very important, specifically when during, during the negotiation process. Matter of fact, if someone is not making eye contact with you, do you not feel that they're not really paying attention to you? That's how your culture has been brought up, or my culture anyway, let me say that. In some countries, eye contact is a sign of disrespect. All right, it is an emotional issue. So people that would be making eye contact typically would be emotionally involved with each other. Whereas in a negotiation, they may not be making eye contact. So understand that is a different cultural fa asset or facet. <clears throat> Alcohol, very big part of the U.S. culture. You know, oh, let's go have a beer and celebrate. Oh, you know, I'll drink to that. All kinds of issues. Some religions look down upon alcohol and may honestly have a belief that people that partake of alcohol are not as trustworthy. So keep that in mind when dealing with another culture or another religion that their attitudes towards alcohol is completely different and may be something that you want to eliminate from any of your language. Gift giving in China and Japan, gift giving is very important. It shows respect and it shows honor that they can give you a gift. In some areas, gift giving is okay, but it's really not that important. And in some areas, we're not allowed to give gifts unless it's fully disclosed. So understand that. Being punctual. You know, some cultures believe that you must be there five minutes early to be on time. Some cultures do not have the adherence to punctuality that maybe you feel. So you also have to be aware of the punctuality and the time frame in which they work. Some people are very, their culture is very informal and open as opposed to very time mandated, uh, which can lead you to things like handshaking. In the United States, we shake hands a lot. Uh, a good example in Brazil, they like to hug. All right, it's a very warm handshake. Other countries, it's very professional and you would never hug the CEOs of another company when you met them. Different cultures have different ways. So understand that there are different cultural diversities out there that you are going to be involved in. And not only could it be a violation of the fair housing, which alone should be a reason <clears throat> 
But it also should be in your professionalism to understand that you want to give your client the best service possible. You want to, you know, exercise all your fiduciary responsibilities. And all of that is required that you understand where they are coming from, both from a religious aspect, a cultural aspect, their social aspect. You know, I will even go back to that first point about lumping all cultures together. There is a different way people in Alabama act than say a person in New York, than a person in uh, California. So even in the United States, where we apparently appear to have same cultures and values and classifications may not always be true. So you have to understand that is the whole point of what I'm talking about. All right. If you have any questions, I would suggest you seek outside advice. Talk to your managing broker about cultural diversity. There are many, many classes that are given by the NAR, by the local board. You can Google uh, social, cultural diversity and do some study. So please understand that you need to give the best service and that's going to require that you may understand different cultures, different language, different traditions, all of that. All right, let's hang around for some more.